So, jetzt fahren wir noch hier West, den Badamaran.
Schwimmt im Hafen rum, der Bursch. Just beyond on the right hand side is our former old customs house, the red brick building with those Romanesque arches. Built in 1891, it's since been a government building, a post office. Yeah, the courthouse said it's well, even had a secret laboratory on the top level where Thomas Edison used to develop weapons for the U.S. Navy, most notably the death charge back during World War I. Directly across the street on the right hand side, you're going to see a tall red or a tall concrete block building. It's Mel Fisher's Maritime Museum. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, gold, silver, and jewels is on display inside that building right there. They were discovered from the Spanish guy in Zatocha and Santa Margarita. They sank in a hurricane off Key West back in 1622. Guys, one more time, I'm just going to put it out there. If I can hear your conversation, so can everybody else that around you. There we go. Coming up on the right-hand side, guys, you're going to see the birthplace of Pan American Airlines. First commercial international flight in U.S. history was booked in this building back in 1927 from Key West to Havana, Cuba. Right up here on the corner of this house, the Pirate's Well, the only known naturally occurring source of fresh water on Key West. Now, right up here in the corner... <coughs> on the right hand side on the corner here is the uh, Porter Mansion. <coughs> Dr. Joseph H. Porter was our first public health official. How y'all doing now? He developed methods for eradicating the yellow fever epidemic. Back in the 1800s, it was eradicating the keys. That was our mayor, by the way. He was born in that house back here in 1847, died in that house eight years later. He didn't have any weapons, so they would give you some. Now, ladies, <laughs> so arguably more dangerous than it was. <laughs> Up here on the left hand side, across the street, guys, you're going to see Flagler Station Museum. Henry Flagler built the Overseas Railroad, building 138 miles of railroad. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but when you do it over the ocean back in 1912, it was a monumental task to be certain, and considered by many to be the eighth wonder of the world at the time. Your ticket will get you access to Flagler Station Museum, where we have a short video. Some literature and artifacts that will teach you all about Henry Flagler's famous railroad to the sea. And with that, we're coming in on stop number two. Stop number two will be your stop for Flagler Station, Max Seagarden, here in Coffee Queen. And the Half Shell Raw Bar. Anybody for stop mm -hmm. number two? Yeah. Stop two, anybody? West. This is the old bite marina. It's where the shrimping and fishing fleet actually used to be stationed. And as we make this left-hand turn into this alleyway known as Lazy Lane Way, I'll show you guys a taste of old Key West up here. See what I mean in just a few moments. There we go. Right here on the right-hand side, the Skinner Wharf Bar. Now when I say it tastes of... Up here to our front, soon to be our front right, it's going to be a white building. Very unassuming looking building. It's called Shrimp Boat Sound. This is the recording studio of a famous musician that helped put Key West on the map a few years back by the name of Jimmy. You guys know who we're talking about, right? Jimmy Carter, former president of the United States. Up here on the left hand side, long red brick building with some painted white paint on it. The old school bell hanging up there. Now we're coming up on the tallest building in Old Key West, the La Concha Hotel. Luxury Hotel built back in 1926. It's seven stories tall. Impressive, right? It's also the longtime home of American Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Tennessee Williams. He's the guy who wrote Streetcar Named Desire. And he wrote that while he stayed here at the La Concha Hotel. So in contrary to popular belief, it was built all the way back in 1851 by famous wrecking captain, or wrecking captain and naval architect Asa Tiff. He was also one of the founders of Key West. The house was purchased for an way back in 1931 by his second wife's rich uncle Gus at a tax sale for $8,000. Now 
Now, thanks to the hurricane, you can actually see the thing. Take a look to your left. The home of Ernest Hemingway from 1931 to 1941. During the 10 years Hemingway called this place home, he completed many of his works, most famously the book to have and have not. It's now the largest privately owned plot of land on Key West at one acre, and dozens of descendants of Hemingway's original six toed cats still call the property home, and they're provided free medical care and food by the city of Key West. Yeah, they're part of the cultural history of the island. Here on the right-hand side, the Key West Lighthouse and Lighthouse Museum built on this location in 1847 after the original was destroyed in a hurricane up at the end of the road in 1846. It was de decommissioned in 1969, now it's the Lighthouse Museum. If you're on the left-hand side of the trolley, take a look back over your left shoulder, you'll get that famous... It was used in the uh, opening sequences of the James Bond movie, License to Kill. They built the wedding scene right in front of the door. Now, speaking of weather, you guys know we did get a little storm through here a couple of months ago. Maybe you didn't hear anything about it. There was almost no coverage about it at all on the news. <laughs> My favorite part was how all the newscasters would come down here. They'd put on their uh, rain boots and their raincoats, and they would look for a, a pod that grows on a K-pop tree. And inside that pod is cottonous fiber that used to be harvested and sewn into the life jackets of the United States Navy. That's why naval personnel years ago used to refer to one. And they said, well, throw in Key West. We said, sold. Oh. <laughs> I like it. Now up here on the left hand side, guys, take a look. This is Garrison White Marina. Our old naval garrison used to be stationed in the anti-piracy fleet of 1823. 1840. When an American author named Thelma Strabel built this house up here on the left, just about 18 inches further toward the, the uh, ocean, and just has a little poke in the eye, she put a plaque next to her gate, and it reads, The Southernmost, Southernmost House. Oh. <laughs> take that, Judge. Up here on the corner is the southernmost line of tourists. And they're standing here waiting to take pictures at what's most commonly referred to as the southernmost point in the continental United States. Now, as we make the southernmost right-hand turn, we can let everybody know that this is actually not the southernmost point in the continental United States. That is the southernmost point in the continental United States. That's also owned by the Navy in this late 1800s. Hit a base of operations here on Key West, and he used to hold these big rallies right up here in the street in an effort to gain support for his war against the Spanish. He would give these big, fiery, impassioned speeches from a balcony up here that became known as Martí's Terrace, or La Teresa de Martí. Now, La Teresa de Martí is difficult for us to pronounce, so we had to dumb it down a little bit. La Teresa de Martí became La Chita. That's just lazy, isn't it? But look at that second-story balcony on the right. That's where Jose Marti used to stand. And these streets would be completely covered with his supporters. Very important man in Cuban history. He to be the George Washington of the Cuban Revolution. For those of you who don't know, George Washington was the leader of the American Revolution. We have a lot of people who are not from America who don't know who George Washington is. Sadly, but true, we have a lot of people who are from America who don't know who George Washington is. Yes. It's called Google, people. Now we're on Upper Duval Street right now, guys. Upper Duval Street has a little different flavor than Lower Duval Street. Lower Duval Street's more famous for its drinking, its partying, and its nightlife. Upper Duval Street's more famous for its fine dining, its art galleries, and its shopping. So if any of those sound fun to you guys, we're coming in here on stop number 12. Stop 12, guys. Upper Duval Street. Anyone for stop 12? Yeah. Zwei Meter laufen, ne? Ja, lass mal zwei Meter laufen. Ja, ja. No one! So, guys, everybody on your tours. Call the Kong, there's a fun story behind that. After the American Revolution, we had some folks called loyalists. They were still loyal to the British crown. They fled the newly born the United States for areas that were still under British control. The Bahamas and such. Now, once they got there, they were still being very heavily taxed on things like food, and they got mad about that. So they told Britain's King George that rather than pay those crazy food taxes, they would sooner eat conch. Have any of you ever seen a live or raw conch when they pull that thing out of the shell? Well, for those of you who have not had the pleasure, it looks like about a three-pound booger with an eyeball. Oh, I'm not kidding. It, it looks like a giant, slimy sea snail. Kind of, it's a disgusting-looking creature in every sense of the word. So so you're going to eat one. one. It's a bold statement indeed. However, true to their word, they came up with 27 different ways to cook and eat this ugly looking thing. Children lived very happily in this hall right up to the part where Francisco's wife from Cuba showed up. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Turns out old Francisco had been married before, at least allegedly. It didn't bother to tell us. We just small to redo everything. 
Up here on the right are Key West Library, the pink, uh, so kind of pink colored building here. Example of Bahamian architecture, kind of has that Dutch colonial flavor to it. What do you think of that? Every library has what's called their reading room, but nobody has one quite as beautiful as ours. We can sit down and read your book here on the right hand side. Up here on the left, the Church of the Four Doors, this big white building, was the street uh, completely destroyed in a hurricane in 1909, except for the four doors here on the corner. Parishioners took that little sign from God and they rebuilt the church around the doors and the name stuck. Now we have some New England style architecture here on the island. We had a lot of settlers that came down here on ships from New England using red bricks from New England brickyards for ballast. When they got down here, they'd offload the bricks, offload the passengers and cargo, and back up north they'd go. And after those bricks piled up in 1893, our New England uh, residents decided to build themselves a little reminder of home. Here on the left, the first congressional church called this our New England style church. Notice the uh, bricks are different sizes, shapes, even colors. They were brought here on different ships, utilizing different brickyards on different days. But when you live on a rock in the middle of the ocean, nothing goes to waste. Like I said, you repurpose, reuse, or recondition everything else you can get. To this day, we don't have brickyards. We've got some places you can buy bricks, but they're scarce. Now we have some architectural similarities here on the island as well. As we go through this little neighborhood, take a look at all the roofs of these houses, including the one that got caved in by the tree during the hurricane. Tell me what you see. Tin roofs. Tin roofs were mandated after the Great Fire of 1886. The idea was if your house caught fire, then the embers blew over onto a neighboring house, they'd simply slide down the roof, land on the ground, and be extinguished. Some of the unexpected benefits were that they siphon off nice clean rainwater for drinking and bathing purposes and even reflect the hot rays of the sun, keeping the homes cooler during the harsh months. Now, if you guys are feeling a little dizzy or nauseous, perhaps a nose bleed for death because we are the high there below the floodplain. We do it. Because about 12 inches underneath that nice soft green grass is solid coral limestone. Island's one big chunk of rock. It's very difficult to dig through, so we build upward. Now, over here on the right, you're going to see a flagpole. At the base of the flagpole, you're going to see a sailor. He has an oar in his right hand, so his left hand is up to his eyes. Not saluting, saluting is done with the right hand. He's scanning the horizon in eternal vigil for his fallen shipmates who are buried at his feet. Twenty-five sailors who lost their lives in the explosion of the uh, USS Maine in the Van Harbor in 1898 are buried beneath him, and he is their memorial. The explosion of the Maine was a very mysterious event. It's pretty much a 9-11 of the 1800s, and it launched America into war with Spain. The Spanish-American War is very short but very brutal struggle, and Key West was used as a hospital island during the campaign. Over 600 soldiers, sailors, and marines were brought here to be given medical treatment after having been wounded in battle on the island of Key West. I'm going to show you guys some architecture that's so unique to our knowledge, it's only found here on the island of Key West. Have you ever heard of eyebrow houses? Anybody ever heard of an eyebrow house? We're going to hear about it today. It's going to be one on both sides, so look out the... Well, I'll show you when, where they are. All you have to do is look out the window you're sitting next to. And the reason I want you to look out the window you're sitting next to is because if you, you got to look at the roofs of the houses. And if you don't look out your window, you might not be able to look, see high enough to see the roof. The one on the right is right up here with the American flag, and the one on the left just across the street from it. So look out both windows you're on there. Look at the roofs of these houses. See how the roofs come down past the second-story windows? That was done on purpose, and the idea was... Just like your eyebrows, that could block out wind, debris, rain, even the harsh rays of the sun. So no matter the weather conditions outside or the time of year, you can keep those windows open to keep the house ventilated. How about that? Huh? Good idea. Now directly across the street on the right, that building with those windows on the lower level, that's our old sponge exchange. Key West had probably one of the most lucrative sponging industries in the world back in the late 1800s. It was said if you went right off the bottom and flop them right there on the boat deck. This is where that strong stomach and weak nose part comes in. A couple of hundred pounds of rotting marine life sitting in the hot Florida sun on the deck of your boat for 12 or 14 hours each day puts off a stench that is beyond the capacity of human words to accurately describe. It smells like nothing you would imagine, and these poor guys had to endure this smell all day every day until those sponges could be brought back to the docks, beaten out with sticks in a chemical solution, and then hung up to cure on large pieces of rope in the hot South Florida sun before they could even think about selling those things to the public. Our sponging industry came to a screeching halt right about 1910 with a red tide. The big red algae bloom came through these waters and it took all the oxygen and killed everything in the water, sponges included. Our sponge has had grown back, but our sponging industry moved up to Tarpon Springs, Florida. Here's a funny story. One day I came by here and a fella thought he was being smooth. He had his camera up under Marilyn's dress taking pictures. 
I made a comment about it. He got mad. No kidding. He got mad. He called the office, and I got called into the boss's office to explain myself. Now, I thought to myself, oh, yeah, that's right. That's exactly what you should do on a tiny island crowded with people. Anyway. Yeah, I was saying, order right here on the right-hand side. Check this thing out. Chains out the whole block. Drops down all of these sections of white wall is the same banyan tree, but there's more. The tree goes up around and behind the house. Take a look down the sidewalk into the backyard here, guys. That's the same tree back there. I know. That's a monstrous tree. Up here on the corner on the right-hand side, Kelly's Restaurant. Founded and formerly owned by actor Kelly McGillis. She starred opposite Tom Cruise in the 1980s blockbuster, Top Gun. You guys remember that one, right? That movie was loosely based on my life. <laughs> there it is, man. Here on the left-hand side, you guys see this big concrete silo? This used to be the water supply for the old naval base back here in the 1800s. Now it's used for rum. I know, shocking. Up here on the right-hand side, our Geiger house. John Geiger was our first harbor pilot back in the 1800s. Now it's the Audubon house. John James Audubon worked on his book, Birds of America, while he stayed in that house. He's been on the TV show Mysteries at the Museum. Several of Audubon's original etchings are still on display inside the house. Now look in front of us. See that big tower up there? That's a wrecking tower built on the same location as the original wrecking tower. That's our shipwreck treasures museum, guys. We have three stories of recovered shipwreck cargo and artifacts. We got some live actors. Short video in there teaching them about Key West famous wrecking industry. That being said, we're going to be coming into stop number one now. Stop number one is Mallory Square. Mallory Square leads back to Mallory Dock. That's where our nightly sunset festival takes place. No, stop. Just come this.